Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting problem. We have z equals z bar squared plus 1. So the complex conjugate of z squared and then 1 is added and that's equal to the original number. And we're going to be solving for z of course. Now this problem was suggested by a highly educated trucker. Thank you very much for the suggestion, for the idea. I think this is a beautiful problem. And following his instructions, I'm going to pose a question here. Does the order matter in which we do the conjugacy and the squaring? So in other words, is z bar squared the same as z squared bar? If I square the number and then take the conjugate, or if I conjugate first and then square it, do I always get the same answer? So I'm going to leave that question unanswered for now and we'll proceed with the solution. Okay? So, in order to solve this problem, by the way, if you put it into Wolfram Alpha, writing the conjugate of z in words, uh, this is what you're going to get. z equals, and by the way, that little star thing indicates z bar because I don't know why Desmos, I mean, I mean Wolfram Alpha, right? Why the Wolfram Alpha will not use z-bar? That's a good question. It just uses a different notation. Anyways, this is the input and what is the output? Let's find out. So we're going to replace z with a plus bi because that's the name of this channel. And then from here, z-bar is going to be a minus bi. Just conjugate the imaginary part and you're done. Now we're going to square z-bar. So notice that order as it's given, first conjugate, and then you have to square it. Z bar squared is just going to be A minus B I squared. Hopefully the question will be answered during the video. And this is going to become A squared minus 2 A B I plus B squared I squared. But I squared is negative 1. Remember that? We talked about it like millions of times. Not that many times, but you know the idea. Hopefully. This is negative 1 so we're going to get a squared minus b squared minus 2abi as z bar squared. Okay? I don't care about a minus b squared anymore. This is what I need. Now this plus 1 equals z. So I have z equals z bar squared plus 1. z is a plus bi. z bar squared is a squared minus b squared minus 2abi. And I'm supposed to add 1. And that's going to be it. Make sense? So I got an equation. Let's go ahead and rearrange the right hand side a little bit. Putting the real parts together. Now, when two complex numbers are equal, wh what do we know, right? The real parts are equal. So A is equal to A squared minus B squared plus 1. A is equal to A squared minus B squared plus 1, right? And then, what else can we say? Well b which is the imaginary part is equal to negative 2ab which is the imaginary part so b is equal to negative 2ab all right so we got a system let's go ahead and solve it because it's very easy to solve i'll start and by the way you don't have to start with the second equation i will do that but you can also start with the first one the problem with that is either you have to solve a quadratic in a or you have to use b squared and you have to take square roots and there's going to be two solutions. It's painful. Trust me. Don't go that route. But if you want to, that's definitely fine. But I'm going to start with the second equation. Notice that we can add 2ab on the left-hand side and set it equal to 0. And then factor out a b, 1 plus 2a equals 0. And from here we get two solutions, right? Either b is equal to 0 or a is equal to negative one half. Yeah? And then we're going to use both of these cases with the first equation. By the way, this is the first equation, this is the second equation. So, in the first equation, if you plug in b equals zero, you're going to get the following. a equals a squared plus one, because b is zero, right? And from here we get a squared minus a plus one equals zero. Uh-oh, this equation has no real solutions. How do we know that? If you multiply both sides by a plus 1, you're going to have the cube roots of 
negative 1, which are the complex. Wait a minute, isn't this channel all about complex numbers? Yes, but come on. There's also a real part, a nicer part to complex numbers. They're not completely complex or imaginary. Well, some numbers are, but you know what I'm talking about, hopefully. This one doesn't have any real solution. So, since A is not a real number and A and B have to be real numbers, needless to say that, right? Because that's how we define it. We're not going to be able to take that solution. So, B equals 0 dies and we have to go with this. If A is equal to negative 1 half, what happens, right? Let's find out by substitution again. Plug it in here. So, negative 1 half equals negative 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth minus b squared, right, minus b squared plus 1. Now let's go ahead and isolate b squared, put it on the left-hand side, and put everything else on the right-hand side. 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 half is going to be 1 plus 3 fourths, which is 7 fourths. And from here I should be getting two solutions. b is either square root of 7 over 2 or negative square root of 7 over 2. You could also write this with plus minus, but I want to write it separately. And where does this come from? This comes from A equals negative 1 half. You really need to keep track of things, and you kind of need to keep your work organized. I can't say that I'm very organized, but as you can see, I'm trying to kind of divide it up into cases, look at it case by case, and keep track of every case very carefully. For example, B equals 0 did not give us anything meaningful, so we had to discard it, right? Great. Now, we got these two results based upon the fact that a is equal to negative one half. Therefore, we have two solutions. In other words, we have two ordered pairs which satisfy. You know, uh, so we can write it as a comma b basically can be written as negative one half comma root seven over two, or negative one half comma negative root seven over two. And since z is equal to a plus bi, and these are a and b values, we can basically write z sub 1 as negative 1 half plus root 7 over 2i, and I know some people are going to write it as negative 1 plus root 7 over 2, and then you have to be careful, put, make sure the i to, put the i next to root square root of 7, don't multiply the whole thing by uh, i, because these two numbers obviously are very different. Take a look and you'll know what I'm talking about. So this is z sub 1, and then z sub 2 is just going to be what? The conjugate, yes. And it's kind of interesting because if z works, uh, z bar also works, right? <laughs> if z is a solution, z bar is also a solution. Think about why that would work. I think you'll find it. And this pretty much brings us to the end of this video. We haven't answered the question, but that's yours to answer. If we change the order in which we do the conjugacy or the squaring does it matter anyways this room goes to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye